Um, I'm Francis. I work on the computational photography team at Facebook. And today I'm here to talk to you about 3D photos on Facebook. So why 3D photos? Well, most of the consumer content today is 2D. 3D content is really expensive. It requires skilled artists and a lot of time to create. Or you could Or you could capture your 3D content, but this is very expensive and requires fancy camera rigs such as this. Now, as for me, I'm not a skilled artist, nor am I rich enough to afford fancy equipment like this. So what I do have, though, is a phone. So what if anyone could capture 3D content? Anyone like me or my mom, my dad? Last October, we launched 3D photos on Facebook. 3D photos are a new reactive media type. They respond to the user scrolling through the feed and also the gyroscope input as the user rotates their phone. 3D photos create a sense of a third dimension through the use of parallax, which is the phenomenon that foreground objects tend to move more than background objects. So what do you need to create a 3D photo? Well, currently, all you need is an iOS device that has two cameras. When you use the portrait capture mode on these devices, in addition to the color image, it uses stereo computer vision algorithm to compute a depth map. Our algorithm takes as input a color image and its corresponding depth map. Then, in a matter of seconds, it computes a lightweight and compact 3D model that represents this photo. This all runs completely on device. So I'm going to briefly talk about our algorithm and some of the challenges that we encountered. So a naive way to create a 3D mesh from a depth map is that for every pixel, we can create a point in three-dimensional space, where the third dimensional coordinate is proportional to the depth. Then we can stitch all these points together in a triangular lattice. This looks OK, but we can see that there are some really bad striping artifacts. So what's going on here? Let's take a closer look. So what you see over there is one scan line of a 3D photo. So from the left to the right, we can see that the depth starts out pretty far because it's the background. Then there is a sudden jump to the foreground. Then again, there is a sudden jump to the background again. So depending on the viewpoint of the user, sometimes we want to see behind the foreground into the background. However, if we look at one of the triangles that connect the foreground to the background, we're going to see the striping artifacts from earlier. So how do we solve this problem? Well, one thing we can do is detect these sharp jumps in depth, or depth discontinuities. Then we can simply not connect the foreground and the background. But this leads to another problem. We're going to end up seeing a giant hole in the background. So one way that we can fix this is that we can actually fill in the hole by expanding the 3D mesh and the background layer. However, this creates several complications. One of them is a pretty fundamental problem. Because we've taken this photo from a single viewpoint, we actually don't really know what's behind the foreground. So what do we fill in for this background mesh layer? Well, one thing we can do is in-painting, where we just hallucinate what we think should be in the background. So in our case, we do a pretty simple algorithm where we just take the surrounding colors and diffuse them inwards. Another complication that arises is that when we expanded the background mesh layer, there are all now these triangles that don't map to anywhere on the original input color image. This means that we can't just use the input image as a texture for the 3D photo. Our approach to solving this was creating a second texture atlas, which combines the texture from the original color image, as well as the in-painted occluded regions for the expanded layers. We also cannot use the mesh as a stance. If we connected every single vertex with a triangle, this mesh would be way too dense. In this instance, there are almost 2 million triangles. We created our own 3D mesh simplification algorithm for 3D photos. This greatly reduces the number of triangles needed. And in this instance, it brought the number down from 2 million to just 26,000 triangles. Here are just some examples of 3D photos created on Facebook. As of Monday, there are over 5.8 million 3D photos on Facebook. An interesting observation that we've seen 
is that some of these photos were actually not created using the iPhone depth maps. So how are people creating these then? Well, some very clever users have actually hacked the Apple portrait mode photo file format, and they've created 3D photos using their own custom depth maps. These compose around 1% of all 3D photos. Some of these 3D photos are some of the coolest looking ones. In this case, we have a movie poster of the Alito Battle Angel movie. However, this is a pretty long process to create a 3D photo using a custom depth map. It involves many steps and also requires the use of a third party application. We decided to simplify this flow. Recently, we launched a feature where a user can simply drag an image and its corresponding depth map onto the desktop browser. This greatly reduces the amount of time that is needed for an artist to iterate on their work. Also, it eliminates the need for a phone. So this feature was a huge success for us and greatly exceeded our expectations. Around one third of all 3D photos are now created using custom depth maps through this web interface. We underestimated our users. We thought this would be an enthusiast feature because it's so hard to create a custom depth map. However, we've seen that these artists have found a new artistic medium with 3D photos. This has allowed 2D artists to create 3D art that is still feels like a painting or a drawing or concept art. And this is something really new. These artists have also created a very positive community inside of Facebook groups. We've seen artists help each other discover this feature, as well as share tips, tricks, and their own depth maps to help each other learn. We've also seen a large number of 3D photos created that look like they could be used for advertisements. While we currently don't support 3D photo advertisements on Facebook, this is definitely something that we're exploring. I mean, look at how cool these movie posters look. Some users are also pushing the boundaries of what can be done with a 3D photo. They've created some weird and wacky optical illusions. Some people have even made little games where you use the viewing angle of the user as input. And also, people have been making 3D photo memes. Whoops. So what's next for us at Facebook for 3D photos? Something that we're looking into is improving the quality of our 3D photo generation algorithm. So our M painting currently works pretty well if the background is blurry. But as you can see in these images, if the background is a pretty high frequency texture, then the contrast between the low frequency M painting and the high frequency texture looks pretty distracting. So one thing that we're exploring is using neural networks to hallucinate what should go in the occluded regions. We're also exploring using neural networks for potentially estimating the depth from a single image. The implication of this is that you could potentially create a 3D photo using any device, not just one with dual cameras. This also means that you could apply this neural network retroactively to any image ever captured. In fact, you could even turn a photo like this, an old black and white Civil War photo, into a 3D photo and breathe life into it. In this case, someone has actually done this using a custom depth map. So that's just what Facebook is doing with 3D photos. But we believe there are many opportunities for people to develop tools for 3D photos. And we are potentially considering bringing 3D photos outside of the Facebook ecosystem. So <clears throat> we have already seen many examples of, create, of consumer created tools for um, the community. Uh, for example, people have created plugins for Unreal Engine and Unity that lets you export a custom depth map using a 3D scene. So today I'll pose a question for you. What do you think could be done with 3D photos? Thank you. <laughs>